Greetings everyone, this is Amal Matu from University of Maryland and I've got a great case for you this week. This is the EKG case of the week for May 12, 2012. I've got an interesting rhythm case for you. Here it is. It's a 48-year-old man that presented to the emergency department complaining of weakness. And so, of course, after the history of physical exam, you're going to start out with the 12-lead EKG. Now, looking at this 12-lead EKG, the ventricular rate is not too fast and it's also not too slow, so we're relatively happy about this ventricular rate, but there's something going on in here that's a little bit hard to define. The R to R interval is changing. It looks like it's getting shorter, and then there's another one right there, and then it goes back to long and then short. It, anyway, the R to R interval is messed up, to use, once again, a technical term. And in terms of the P waves, well, there's a P wave right there, and it looks like there's a P wave there and there and there, but there's some other things going on also. Where's the P wave for that QRS and that QRS? And, you know, maybe we can assume that those are connected. Well, I'm not really sure. Maybe there's something in there, and maybe there is uh, something right there also. You know, there's little blips in there. I'm not really sure what to make of those blips. And uh, again, blips is a very technical term that I've been using the past couple of weeks. And what I said in the past is that whenever, you, whenever you've got blips, and you're thinking, well, maybe those are P waves, the simple way to find out for sure whether those are P waves or not is to get some calipers and map it out. So these red arrows represent my calipers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to map out the definite P wave with the questionable P wave, and then march this right across the EKG strip and sure enough what you find is that the clear-cut P waves map out with those blips and maps out all the way across these complexes and it also reveals to us that that little junk right there is a P wave and also that little blip right after the QRS complex is a blip as well and that little blip right there before that QRS complex is a blip as well. You also notice if you're going to try to figure out which P waves are going which with with which QRS complex, well, it's not necessarily that difficult, you know. Um, we can probably assume that this P wave goes with that QRS complex. Let's move a little bit further. There's a P wave right in there, and that goes with that QRS complex. And there's a P wave right there, which goes with that QRS complex. You'll notice that the PR intervals are getting longer and then there's a P wave right there, which is not getting conducted. There's no QRS complex following it. And then you've got another P wave, which is being conducted to that QRS complex. So you've got a P wave, which is not being conducted. That's the first, actually the second important finding. First important finding, of course, is to first of all realize that those really are P waves. Second important finding is that there is a P wave, which is not being conducted. What that means is we're dealing with a heart block, either second degree type 1, also known as Mobus 1, also known as Wenkebach, or second degree type 2, also known as Mobus 2, or third degree. So is this a Mobus 1, is it a Mobus 2, or third degree? And as we've said many times in the past, whenever you're debating between Mobus 1, Mobus 2, and third degree, where do you need to look to find the answer? You simply look in the PR intervals. And what we discovered here was that the PR intervals were gradually lengthening, and then you've got the P wave, which is not conducted. And what that means, folks, is that this somewhat funky, complicated-looking rhythm is nothing more than a Mobitz 1. And there's some lateral T wave inversions suggesting some ischemia out laterally. But anyway, focusing on the rhythm, this is a Mobitz 1, also known as Wenkebach, or second-degree type 1 AV block. All right, so, so again, three simple things. Whenever you see blips on the 12 lead EKG and you're debating, are those blips, are those real P waves, or is that just artifact? You know, those are not clear-cut P waves. You just map it out with what you know for sure is a real P wave. I know that's a real P wave, and that looks like a real good P wave. So just map it out, and what you find is that they, sure enough, they do map out very nicely, that means that all of those are true P waves. And then 
what you do is you just take a look at what the PR intervals are and when you look at what the PR interval is doing then you'll easily be able to figure out whether it's a Mobus 1 or a Mobus 2 or a third degree heart block. You just break it down and suddenly these rhythms become very very simple. All right. So, well, that's it for this week's case of the week. It's a short case, but a nice little rhythm. I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.